We begin with breaking news tonight. Three people arrested in connection with that I-85 fire that caused the flaming collapse of an overpass. It is certainly good to have uh, the people that we believe the perpetrators in jail, but um, obviously that you know, doesn't detract from the serious problems that uh, everybody's going to be experiencing over the, the next couple of months. Well, the problems are all stemming from this, the demolition and eventually the rebuilding of one of Metro Atlanta's busiest thoroughfares. Now, this is a live look as crews work around the clock to get the interstate back up and running. But we begin with that breaking news. Three people taken into custody in connection with the I-85 overpass fire and collapse. The Deputy Insurance and Fire Commissioner tells us they are homeless and started a fire that quickly got out of hand. Now, as for the substance that fueled that fire, the Georgia DOT confirms it was their own material. Construction supplies consisting mainly of plastic conduit used for electrical or fiber optic cables. That fueled the flames. We're going to continue to take a look at why it was just sitting there under the overpass in a minute. But first, let's send it straight out to Jacqueline Schultz. She's live at the scene of the fire and collapse. Jacqueline, what do you have? Well, investigators tell us that witnesses placed the three people who were homeless at the bridge when the fire started. They released their names a few hours ago. Sophia Broner and Barry Thomas for criminal trespass and Basil Ellaby on a felony charge. We just got his mugshot into our newsroom. It's a mugshot from the Fulton County Jail from 2014. Now he faces a charge of first degree criminal damage to property. Now investigators are still trying to piece together at this point how exactly Exactly, these three started that fire. We believe they were homeless individuals. So they used available material to, to start the fire. Speaking by phone from Athens, Georgia's Deputy Insurance and Safety Fire Commissioner says investigators won't say how or why three homeless people started a fire that took down the I-85 bridge. He tells me how investigators found the people after scouring the scene Friday morning. We had heard reports that they were in the area um, and we were able to, to track um, you know, two of them down and that led us to a third. Investigators could not say why the three were under the bridge in the first place and what they used to start the blaze. State officials did say GDOT stored plastic conduit under that section of I-85 at Piedmont Road and called it a, quote, stable, non-combustible material. There is a huge fire under the bridge. Witnesses now tell Fox 5 they saw fire under the top portion of the bridge before it raged out of control. The owner of one store right next to the bridge shared her cell phone video and says homeless people would often stay under the bridge. It's sad. It's sad because it affects all the business in this area. We all going to hurt. Demolition crews are going to be here all night as well as fire investigators. I'm going to step aside so my photojournalist can zoom into what crews are looking at. Now, I spoke to fire investigators a little while ago and they tell me they're waiting for the crews to lift the part that fell so they can see what exactly was under it. While investigators haven't been specific as to what exactly started the blaze, they want to look at what was under the bridge to make sure they know what started that fire that led to the collapse. We're going to stay on top of this story and bring you the latest developments and information from investigators on the arrest. But for now, reporting live from Northeast Atlanta, Jacqueline Schultz, Fox 5 News. Major developments tonight. Jacqueline, thanks. Now, for many, today was a gridlock nightmare. The flames are out, of course, but the headaches are only just beginning. According to the Department of Transportation, you'd better get used to the inside of your car. It is going to be several months before the I-85 overpass is back up and ready for traffic. And we got some bad news today. The fallen overpass isn't the only repair project. Crews will also have to remove and replace five standing sections, approximately 700 total feet of roadway, plus all the support columns. Now, the other big question on everyone's minds tonight is what caused the fire to erupt into an inferno in such a short amount of time? Well, the GOT tells us that the plastic conduit that caught fire is a non-combustible material stored on the state's right of way. They also said that it was a secured area inside a locked chain link fence. 
understand it. We're trying to understand more about how long that's been stored there. But again, it's no different than having a plastic cup in your cupboard. It does not ignite. It takes something to cause something like that to burn. Well, now fire investigators have to figure out whether a small fire started by homeless people was enough to ignite all of the plastic materials. And while that investigation takes place, the city will be putting 10 million federal dollars to work right away. The White House made that announcement this afternoon. In fact, the governor spoke with President Trump. The government says the quick release funding will be used to restore emergency access and begin the most critical repairs in the next few weeks. Today directed the Federal Highway Administration officials to award $10 million in emergency relief funds to help begin repairs on Atlanta's collapsed I-85 overpass. A Georgia Governor Deal has already declared a state of emergency in Fulton County. He says the state is mobilizing resources to try to keep traffic disruption to a minimum while emergency work continues. Well, Atlanta roads and interstates were already choked with traffic, and now the collapsed bridge on I-85 Metro drivers have a real traffic mess on their hands. DeKalb Police would not allow drivers access to four of the I-85 southbound ramps during rush hour this morning. DeKalb's communications manager tells us the ramps are now back open. Also, the Buford Connector reopened at around 2 this afternoon. Officials say travelers need to adjust what they're calling a new normal. The fact of the matter is you're just not going to be able to come north off of the connector on 85. Southbound on 85, inside of 285, essentially there'll be access all the way down to Georgia 400. That's why we built 285, y'all. As simple as that, that's the bypass, okay? So it's a pretty simple traffic plan. The cork is in the bottle here. You're going to have to use 285. Well, repairing I-85 is going to be a long process, and officials recommend that Atlanta workers find a long-term solution to get around that part of the interstate that's closed. And for many people, the long-term solution is going to be MARTA. Now, MARTA says ridership is already way up, an 80% increase just today. MARTA will have more staff at some stations to help new riders and to assist passengers. Uh, Fox and I spoke with several new users of the public transit system today who say it was definitely their best option. Today, with all those things and expecting a big traffic, I decided to take MARTA. Well, I think it's going to be easier to get in and out of the city, and I think going forward, um, I don't really know how it's going to be as far as commute times go. I mean, I live close to a MARTA station. Um, this was probably the easiest option I could take, so um, it was almost a no-brainer. But some of the riders we spoke with today say so many people opted to take MARTA, there was nowhere to sit on the trains.